<laughs> I got too loosey. I got too loosey goosey. Okay, so here's the deal. It, it, part of it was in the email. So last year, I did a LinkedIn Get Client Summit on video, and I'm not a video pro, but we use video to uh, like in the sales process just to as a shortcut for trust. And then later that day, I get a video message from Simon, and I was like, this is the best video message. Is one of the only video messages anyone's ever sent me on LinkedIn. And he's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was so well done. And he looks like my favorite doctor from Dr. Who. So I was like, instantly, <laughs> instantly love this guy. <laughs> About 50, 50 there of you went dark on me. <laughs> and then anyways, so there, there are so many skills. I'm realizing that people need, it's almost like you need to be a T-shaped marketer, right? Where you're, you're good at a breadth of things, but you can go deep in one. And video is one of those things where I feel like if you have a little bit of it in your wheelhouse and you're on LinkedIn, it'll go a long ways. And video, uh, Simon's been doing video since I was using Napster to download Jimmy Eat World. So <laughs> probably even probably even before you were born. Actually, <laughs> I've got more. I've got more hairs and bald spots than the camera lets on. So don't worry. Don't worry. All right. So Simon, um, take the reins, man. Take the reins. So I'm gonna get let Simon do some uh, give a whatever he feels like is most important to talk about. We're going to roast him with great questions and then we'll just see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, please do. Okay. Now, I guess most of you probably don't know who, who I am. Um, so I am a video coach, a strategist and a producer. And I, my background is actually a yeah, broadcast media, um, which I started back in the mid eighties. Okay. So I'm a bit wow. of a granddad when it comes to, comes to video. Um, but for the last uh, few years, about 15 years, I've just been doing videos for businesses. And a couple of years ago, I wrote a book called how to get video right, which is aimed at businesses, you know, how, how to do video, because I see a lot of things where businesses, people dabble with video and, and, you know, it's been around for a while, but people aren't really using it effectively. And there's a number of reasons for this. One is time. Actually, probably a random when trying to make videos, it is pretty time consuming. Um, and the other is, is uh, fear. People don't want, you know, don't, don't want to be on camera. Uh, I've probably interviewed oh, thousands of people over decades. And I don't think, it, you know, most people, probably 90% plus, go, oh, I don't like the way I, I sound or look. You know, yeah. so it's a common or, or people are like, oh, I was really horrible. I was crap in front of the camera. I can't, I can't do this and stuff like that. You know, and then it's lack of resources and, I mean, there's loads of reasons why people don't do video, um, but I'm trying to encourage people to do video <laughs> and, because you need it. I mean, as a business owner, yeah. entrepreneur, you must do video. It, it's, it's not a nice to have. And so I've sort of changed more into like, how can I help business owners, entrepreneurs uh, create video content consistently? And it's not all about the production. Okay? It's not all about the kit and the whatever it is. A lot of people do ask me those sort of questions. Um, but unless you have, I think, a strategy in place, hence, hence I wrote the book, um, people can spend a lot of time, money, and effort making videos and they just don't work yeah. because they don't have a strategy. Uh, they tend not to look at the analytics and they don't really use it well. So that's me. That's what I'm about now is trying to make sure that people do get video right. Awesome. I love it. Hey, you, you should put the uh, link t- for your book on the chat. <clears throat> yeah, actually, what I can do is um, preparing myself that you might have asked this question. Hopefully you're asking this question because what I want to do is if I can, hang on, cut, I'm going to cut and paste the link in a moment when, it, when I don't get the spitting world of death on my Mac. Yeah, there we go. Um, because what I would do uh, for you guys who are on the call and ladies on, on the call, what I'm going to do is I'll give this book away for free. All you need to do is pay for the shipping and handling. Okay. So generous. So generous, Simon. You know, because it's, yeah, because I want to get this book into the hands of uh, many people as possible. So And it's a you, real book. It's an actual People, it's people are surprised. It's like, you know, it's like, it's a, I call it a pucker book. It is. It's like 200 odd <laughs> pages. It's, it took me a while to write this thing. Nice. You know, what's a video guy doing writing a book? Well, um, it's a good way to get all my thoughts and my experience and, you know, to say, right, here, here it is. Um, so, yeah, please, um, cool. if you'd like to copy, there's a link in the chat. Um, I, I'll send it to you wherever, awesome. no matter where you are in the world. It, it's, um, you can buy it on Amazon, but I guess in the States, I don't know, it's $27 or something. And it's probably much uh, 
cheaper if I just send it to you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah, you, Simon. Yeah. Hey, Alex and Steve, you should turn your cameras on if you want. And if you're working from home, nobody cares. Just thought I'd throw that out there. <clears throat> All right. So uh, anybody have... Simon, do you want to say anything else, or can we can we start asking you some? I know. I mean, questions? I can say lots, but please ask questions. You know, any questions you 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 have, that'd be great. So I have a I have a question for you. I have I have lots of questions. So I'll just put one out there. Uh, what? For, let's okay. So for LinkedIn, it's like oh, which one should I choose? So for for LinkedIn as a video person, what do you feel like is going on that is good, and where do you where do you see where you're going? Eh, that's a waste and probably not going to help anybody. Um, yeah. So, so obviously LinkedIn is one of my primary uh, social media channels that I'm focusing on. And I'm seeing, so what I do, I try and do a couple of videos a week on to LinkedIn that are normally pre-recorded. Um, I'm finding, yeah, the engagement is, is good if you keep them short and short is generally under, under two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I try and keep them very much um, sort of educational uh, thought leadership type pieces rather than different to other mediums like maybe YouTube or Facebook where a lot of people probably sell. It's one thing on LinkedIn I find that um, people aren't really using videos to, to sell their services as much. Um, I, did, I actually did a video on that recently about people bombarding on selling on LinkedIn. Um, I guess my approach is very much value first yeah. um, rather than I do see people I've seen people post something to say, I'm available here, buy my stuff, and I don't, that doesn't work. So I think that the thought leadership, tutorials, um, um, behind the scenes stuff works really yeah. well. Uh, with LinkedIn, shorter is not much better. The only thing I don't like about LinkedIn is that you just, you just don't get analytics from it, you know, mm, especially sure. if you're posting on your personal page. You upload the video, I mean, you can't do thumbnails, you can't upload, you can't upload an SRT file, but you just, got no idea or a little idea about who's watching. You can they tell you someone's watching from this company and that's about it, but they don't give you the analytics in terms of what we call watch time. Yeah. yeah. So a view on LinkedIn is three seconds. Mm -hmm. So it's quite easy, you know, for you to get quite a few thousand views on LinkedIn potentially, but you just don't know that someone just watching the first three seconds and then switching off. So I'd like it if LinkedIn would do what everyone else is doing, including Facebook and, and YouTube, particularly where, you know, you can see uh, where people are watching, how long they're watching for, and where the drop off rate is, because ultimately people don't watch a video in its entirety. You know, the drop off yeah. rate is pretty huge. Yeah. Um, pretty much I would say 50% of people don't watch the end of your video, probably more than that. So a tip for anybody, if you do have a call yeah. to action, yeah. In, in LinkedIn video, I tend not to put a lot of call to action in my videos. So if I'm going to do that, I'll put it in the in the comments or, or in the post. Is you got to if you're doing the video, you got to put it up front, put it up, put mm -hmm. it early in the piece. Don't leave it till the end. Do you find that on most platforms where the drop off, you know, halfway through, start, really starts to trickle down? So if you're going to not try to be polite or whatever, you just t tempted to put it at the end, but then no one sees it. Is Correct. that pretty? Pretty common mistake yeah. people make. I need to guess that's all, all platforms. No, because because I've been making um, you know videos for business for a long time. I mean, you used to always put the call to action at the end, yeah. <clears throat> but now you've got this thing called um, analytics. You know, and so people don't want. That's one thing that I find that a lot of businesses that I work with, and very few people will actually go into the analytics and look at how the video is performing. They just seem to put it on on the Facebook feed or the YouTube or on the website, and they don't look at actually how the video is performing. Uh, give, which is one of my, to be honest with my mum, bugbears really is like, give me, can I have the access to your analytics so I can sort of give you a report to, to see how the video is performing? Because then you'll know, you know, you'll know that people aren't only watching 20 seconds and dropping off because there's a certain thing in that video which is happening, whatever it might be, you can change it, right? You can go back and re-edit it, do different yeah. versions, things like that. So does being aware of that influence how you script out and plan what the whole video is going to be just being aware of that one stat. Yeah. Cause I think, so, so I'm trying to encourage all my clients because everyone what seems to still want to put their logo on the front of a, of mm -hmm. a business video. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Don't put the logo. You know, basically you come in with it on social media, particularly LinkedIn, it's a hook. Then maybe you can have your sting or maybe your message to who you are. 
and, and then you go into to the to maybe a call to action, then your message, and then maybe you can have a call to action again at, at the end. So the, my approach to LinkedIn at the moment is primarily I'm just giving you know value, generally. Yeah. You know, I I don't pretend to like a YouTube strategy would be hook, then say who you are, and then go into the meat of the message, and then go into a call to action at the end. Um, at the moment, my strategy with LinkedIn is it's just I'm assuming that people are connected with me. Therefore, hopefully, but you can't guarantee anything, they might know who I am. Most people know I'm a video guy, so I don't tend to go, I just want to keep my videos as short as possible, uh, ideally under two minutes, um, and just go straight, straight into the message. Yeah. Uh, do you know, Simon, and maybe Dave, you might even know this too, for the, when you upload an SRT file to video, if, can, can, is the link on the caption clickable? No. Okay. I think that I think so. My best practice is actually to burn the words onto the video, not to upload okay. it. Only yeah. because, especially if you're doing anything for other, not so much YouTube, but for Facebook particularly, and I, I'm suspecting LinkedIn's the same. Is you know most people are are watching, consuming social media on these things, right? And it really helps. Uh, and especially, I guess, people watching video that are quite. I'm lot of building commutes, and I have had some feedback from some of my clients generally saying, yeah, thanks for actually burning the captions in because I'm on a train. So best yeah. practice yeah. is to put, burn the, the captions on, onto the screen so you don't need an SRT file. And obviously there's loads of ways you can do that and, and apps. My, the way I do it is I upload my video to rev.com, pay the dollar a minute, get the SRT file back. I then use a program which is a Mac only program called Handbrake, handbrake.fr. It's a free little app, which you can then burn the, um, the SRT file onto the video. I export that, then upload it. Cool. That's my process. Very so cool. I use Quick, and I'm curious if you've played with it. So I've used other, uh, I've used other platforms, like is it Quick? Is it one of them I've used? I've used a couple um, where they, you can make the video then square, because there's also a debate whether the video should be square, which is one one, or or widescreen. Mm. Uh, I've experimented with both. Uh, I tend not to find much difference in engagement. I can't see a massive difference between the two. I do like square format because it's only because it turns out it comes up a bit larger. It's a bit more yeah. realistic on the phone. Um, but I'm not doing square at the moment. I'm just because I'm just doing trying to get videos out because. Do square is another process. Though you can use these other online apps like Quick, there's, there's a number of them where you upload it. You can make it square, it'll give you the banner at the top and then the, the, the captions underneath. Um, my issue with that is it takes too long. It takes, I have to go in and maybe it's my accent, which is sort of a hybrid between English and Australian, because I actually grew up in, a, in Australia for 20 odd years, lived in Australia for 20 odd years. Um, yeah, it, just, it just takes me too long, I have to correct it. Mm. <laughs> I don't know time um, to do that, which is why I'm currently doing do the system that I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's loads of, you know, if someone can give me an app, which can then train, I mean, it will get better. I mean, AI will get, will get so much better uh, over time for sure. No doubt about that. But at the moment, maybe it's my accent <laughs> and they don't understand what I'm saying. So, so it takes me twice as long to try and try and correct it. And I give up. That's why I've tried a couple now. It's not, no, I'm just going to do it my way for the time. Have, Simon, have you ever had the luxury of comparing the video analytics for the same video with and without caption and to see how much longer people stick around when there is caption burned onto it? No, no, because generally I'm always put captions on there. Though having, I just, um, anybody's LinkedIn with me, I've just actually uploaded a video without captions only because it was a time thing. <laughs> um, yeah. And I've been interested to, to see. Um, I don't know, it's a good question because I think my belief is that probably, or maybe on LinkedIn particularly, I guess a lot of people probably, you know, I think it's a higher percentage of people probably, probably using LinkedIn as, on a desktop uh, yeah. rather than always mobile. Yeah. I mean, and, and then actually just going back to LinkedIn, what I think really good about LinkedIn is actually where something like uh, Facebook or Instagram, your, whatever you post is gone in 24 hours. Uh, we've linked in, I'm finding, I'm still getting people commenting on my posts and my videos from like three weeks ago. 
you know, so mm-hmm. it's got a, a lot longer uh, life. And obviously, and I think a lot of people ask me about YouTube uh, as well. And for me, my, for YouTube, you have to have a completely different strategy compared to other social, social media. I don't consider YouTube a social media platform. I consider it a, a video sharing a search engine. Basically. Yeah. Um, so you give them a long engagement on YouTube as a different strategy for something like LinkedIn or Facebook. Can I ask you an audio mixing question? Is that your real house too? Sorry, my kick, uh, audio, like mixing the audio. Yeah, I just, so I use Final Cut Pro. Okay. And mixing, I, now I make it simple because I just do cuts. Uh, I put a compressor filter on my voice and I put a bit of music underneath. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's it. Well, so, so my question is, and maybe I'm overthinking this. So when, when we're doing a recording, and especially like on, on Zoom, where it kind of like brings the quality down, I find that I'll need to, you know, cut out the higher end and then bring up like the two to 400 hertz to make it a little bit more bassy. But depend, it's like you're mixing it for the device that you're editing it on. And if someone's on their phone, it might sound really tinny. And if someone's on their desktop, it might sound amazing or headphones, it might sound amazing. So I feel like, should you just shoot for the best, the lowest common average kind of thing? Yeah, shoot for best quality. I, mean, I just put a compressor or filter on mine and, and can tweak it slightly if there's a bit of background noise. Um, but I don't spend a lot of time on, on the yeah. audio. Uh, even in my professional videos, I don't just need to fix it. As long as the levels are good, mm-hmm. you know, about minus six. Music's not too loud underneath. So I put a lot of music. So music underneath covers a lot of sins. Okay. It covers a, a lot of background noises sure. and any pops or crackles or anything like, like that. Mm. Um, so I always put music on my videos. And I That's use really Artlist. I think it is Artlist. On one of them. That's a, basically a royalty free site. You, know, you pay like $130 a year to have access. Wow. Yeah. Artlist.com. Uh, let me have a look. Um, is it dot list or dot io? I can never. Let me just. So while you're checking on that, with the uh, the thumbnail. Oh, this is dot io. Yeah. Okay, here I'll throw that in the chat. Artlist dot io. Yeah. So with the the thumbnails on LinkedIn, I, I, prop, maybe some of you are familiar with this. There's it's just going to grab the first frames. So Correct. if you want to be selective about what the first images on your LinkedIn video, you have to grab the frame you want and add it like as a, right in the beginning of your video, as like a layer over the top or just right in the I do, so what I do, um, so yeah, if, you use, if you're posting videos in your business page, you can upload a, a thumbnail, but for your personal pro- profile, it just takes the first frame. So for what I do is I, um, you can just put a frame up there, like create your own thumbnail, such as this, and then just import into the program. What I do is just put text. So I have me live as, uh, as in vision and just have some big text up, up the front. Oh, cool. So I don't actually overlay, all I'm doing is overlaying some text. Sure, yeah, I, I just saw that this morning for your Friday thing, right? Yeah. It was right. like a, a white text layer, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's what I did, yeah. And that yeah. was that, I did that in Photoshop, but um, okay. can do it in the, yeah, just, just that was a uh, PNG clear background overlay that. And so I'm talking and, and the text is there and it just disappears after a couple of seconds. Yeah, that's how I do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hogging Simon, sorry guys. All right, somebody else, <laughs> take the wheel. I'll, I'll be quiet. Yeah. Go for it. Those are pretty awesome questions in, in the message you send us. I want, I want someone else to ask a good question. There's loads of, yeah, there's loads of, um, I did see your, List of questions. Um, I, how much do your videos differ platform to platform? So, um, not a lot, because I, I just focus on LinkedIn and Facebook. So I'm just focusing on two platforms. Um, and so they're, and I'm pretty at the moment creating unique content for each. I'm not cross posting a lot. I did uh, I've, last. Uh, June, I think it was, I did a, what I call a video challenge. I did 30 days, 31 days of video, a, day, a video a day. And I was posting that across all channels. So LinkedIn, Facebook times two, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And I just found 
um, actually posting the same content across all platforms, I felt I, towards the end I got penalized for it. Mm, because really? I finished, yeah, I just think people, especially if you could tell, uh, I think, I don't know how they do, but maybe it's the same posts and stuff like that, same video length. I sort of think that um, they sort of, they knew, somehow they knew that I was doing the same thing. And of course, all the platforms don't want sort of syndicated content across all the platforms that want unique content. So my lesson from the 30 day challenge was do not try to post every, every single social media platform out there. <clears throat> it's not worth it. And um, just focus on, you know, the two that you want. Um, mm -hmm. And that for me, that's LinkedIn and Facebook. So the content is, I do post similar content, pretty much the same. I might re-edit it slightly. And I might also now release it at a different time as well. So I'm not putting everything up there at the same time. I might do a video for LinkedIn uh, one week, and then I might put that on my business page from Facebook the other week. Yeah, so, so I try and mix it up a bit. Mm. Hey. Yes, Simon, um, is there also uh, something to say about overfeeding uh, people with your videos on LinkedIn? or Facebook that you're t too much on there? Now, <clears throat> interesting, um, someone I, I saw, uh, one of the groups I was talking about, that uh, someone said he was speaking to someone at LinkedIn to say that um, posting every day is not, not a good idea, that they're only doing three or four times a post. Um, so in terms of what I do, like anything, I think you should mix it up. So, so in my feed, I might, in LinkedIn, might post a video once or twice a week, uh, but I'll do some other posts. I'll do an image, always include an image. So I do something called a Throwback Thursday post, um, which generally I pick a photograph from me somehow, somewhere back in the last century, <laughs> and sort of created like a business analogy, and that works well. So I try and mix, I mix it up, you know. But I see there's other people on LinkedIn here in the UK. You know, there's a guy called Mark Gaysford who runs a, a recruitment agency and his son. And they do a video every day um, and they're getting tens of thousands of views. Mm. So um, um, I've heard, you know, you shouldn't post a video every day, but then there's arguments that I'm seeing people post a video every day and get a huge amount of traction and engagement. Mm. Who knows? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't pretend. I've got no idea how the LinkedIn algorithm works. So if yeah. anybody can share anything, knowledge on that would be great. I have a question um, about using video in messages. Yeah. So a while back, we were able to use like a bomb bomb or an application like that. And the mm -hmm. message, the video would actually play within the message on LinkedIn. So it looks, it appears that they've changed that now, at least with that application, you, you have to go to somewhere else to watch the video. Yeah. Do you know of any, any way that the video can play right there in a message now? Yep, I do. Will you I share it? It's, this is how I, <laughs> it's, it's only on, it's on a smartphone. Okay. So you can't do it on desktop, but if you go into your LinkedIn um, app on, and I, I don't know if it's Android, but I, I, um, cause I, I'm, a, I'm a iPhone guy, I'm an Apple guy. And if you go into your messages, and when it says write message, and you probably can't see that, it's a little plus sign. Press the plus sign, it comes up with options like attach photographs, camera, video, mm -hmm. and you can record, you can just press the video and you can record a video message and let oh. go and you can then either say cancel or send and off it goes. Or you can record a video, um, send it to your photos app on your iPhone and then just do photos and you can send it that way. Yeah. And that's not a link. That's a, that gives you a, a direct link. That's, that's embedded into the message. And that will play on a desktop, no matter if it's PC cool. or Mac. Yeah. One thing I was work, uh, trying to figure out, Simon, is <clears throat> I, I don't like sending a video message from my phone because I feel like the camera and the audio is like, eh, I'd rather use my normal setup. So I was checking to see if I could do like Bluestack, and, which lets you do an app on your desktop. So I installed the LinkedIn mobile app basically on a fake tablet on my desktop. And I was able to, to do that and do the recording, but it was funky with the, the size 
you know, like it was the camera was funky and the audio wouldn't go through. But and it might just be that I was that I'm not a guru with with I stuff mean, like that. I wonder if there's a workaround there. Well, I would just record it like what I do here, edit it normally, and then just create a, a smaller export a small MP4 file and then mm -hmm. just airdrop it to my phone so it goes into the photos app and then oh sure that's a great idea Simon. do that way yeah that works i've done that, that work. for that that's that's a great idea man cool. <laughs> is there a best best size for that if it's just on phones then or no i just export because i shoot h i just do hd so i just export the normal i mean you can you can either do it uh i mean i always shoot this way i always do vertical oh horizontal that's vertical so I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> I always, so I, I'm not a, you know, unless you're doing stories, it's, it's a, it's a whole, it's a whole can of worms in itself. But um, yeah. I tend to do it that way. Um, I've, I've got no data yet. I mean, I've tried a bit of both because I will film on this as well. I've done this way and that way, but um, I've got no data, enough data to say which one works best. I mean, I guess if you're consuming content on this, it's better to do it that way because that's where everyone holds the phone. And for some reason, people are a bit. I don't know what it is. People are getting a bit lazy to just to do that. Just to switch the phone. But, I've I've gotten lazy about that. Yeah. So, but otherwise, it's still play. But um, otherwise, if it's on desktop, it just it just plays within the, in in the message itself. Cool. Very cool. Uh, I I have to ask one question. So, um, when you're so doing video can be expensive or time consuming if there's a difference there. Any thoughts or advice on uh, doing market research so that what you're scripting out, like you know that your audience cares about it. Like, do you just ask, do you look at your competitors? Do you, what does that look like? Any thoughts there? So for me, the way I try and um, script my videos, and it's, it's how I work with all my clients, is um, you always go with with the why. So you're trying to work, you know, you're trying to work out what are my clients uh, or my potential clients' challenges. So what I do, an exercise I do have done in the past, is you just have to just write down as many challenges or issues that your client faces, um, and try and do a hundred of them. And that way, you're just trying to basically trying to get a degree in my client's problems, right? Yeah, that's and a good I, way to say it. Yeah. And, I, and then, then I and then I try. To, then what I do is then create video content answering their their questions or their challenges, and, and focus on that rather than what a lot of my clients, you know, businesses always come to me and they always want to talk about what they do, you know, and how they do it. And I'm like, depending on where people are in the, really depends on where they are in what I call the customer journey. You know, if it's just awareness, then you need to get them sure and you need to be answering their, you know, what keeps them awake at night or what's their challenges. And you come up with, you know, this, I understand this is your challenge. So what, lots of challenges for video, time, don't want to be on camera, don't think it works. It's too expensive, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the usual, well, how much? My first question when clients come to me to make videos is like, I want to do a video, how much? <laughs> so, yeah. I always go, well, what do you want to use it for? You know, what's the outcome first? And then I work on that way. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so, that's really good. I, I feel like I get, I feel like the, the pressure to just make video, but it's, it's so simple to just write down what are their problems first and then go from there. It's, it's I think, like, duh, duh, Isaac. Well, that's what I, so when people go, when I work with, um, I have sort of my, what I call my VIP clients, where I work sort of a one-to-one -one with, with uh, business owners. Um, and, that's, and the way I start with them is, is not to talk about yourself to start with, not talk about, um, you know, even the why or what you do to start with, because it's very hard to actually talk about yourself um, and if you're not used to this medium. So I always say, well, just start with what are the 10 most frequently asked questions that you always get? And just answer that. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm sure as, as, as any business owner or if you're in any business, you get lots of customers asking the same question. So just do a little video around that. And then you can put that up on social media. You can put that on your website. And then when it comes to scripting, I think it's one of your questions is, um, I, I just, I sort of write, do handwrite what I want to 
what I'm going to think about, but I don't script word for word. I mean, I've yeah. tried to do, I do have an order. I've got a couple, I've actually got two audio cues where you put in front of the camera and you read the words, but for me it doesn't work because it still looks like, hi, my name is Simon <laughs> Banks. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. So for me it doesn't work. So what I love doing, I just try and, I then create notes, just like bullet points. Um, and the great thing about doing video when you record it is you edit it. So you don't have to do is just do one piece at a time. Um, and if you don't like the take that you've done, you just say, well, that was rubbish and do another one. And then if you, when you do some editing, you can then cut out the bad bits. You can cut out the uhs and ums and the hesitations. And do, that makes you sound, and then it makes you sound fantastic. So that's, that's my approach is not to over script because if you write words down, I work with a lot of chief executives who do this where they're, a comms person will, will write them a script and, and the way you write is very different to the way you speak. Yeah. So then I have to, um, when I work with, the, when work with the chief executives, I have to unpick that and try and make them sound human <laughs> rather than, yeah. than, than some sort of corporate robot. Yeah. So the idea is I don't um, write all the script, but whatever works. I mean, some people just really, really struggle to just talk to the camera uh, ad, ad lib and it's not an easy thing to do. The, the only advice for that is, is just practice and just keep doing it really. And eventually you will become more comfortable with it and you will be able to string more than three sentences together. It is an issue when you can't string more than three words together and I've had clients who can't do that either. <laughs> and then you look at things like, is, can I, should they use an audio cue? And occasionally I would say, yes, we better <laughs> because otherwise it's never going to have to get a video out. <laughs> so can I share my trick for getting over having my face on a screen? Sure. because I love it. Uh, we have an app, Marco Polo, yeah. where you can send a quick little video clip back and forth between friends. And so I enlisted at the beginning of my video journey, a friend who I could video back and forth with. And so we would video back and forth to one another and you get used to hearing your voice and seeing your face. And uh, somebody that I knew well enough and knew professionally as well that we could critique one another on like, hey, you, you should try holding it differently. You should have better sound there. Um, and that was really, it, it was fun, but it was also really beneficial. It, it like got me over that hurdle. Mm -hmm. I think one of the, I think you've touched on a great point there is that is most, most, uh, most people just don't like the way they look and sound. And there's, reason, there's psychological reasons for that, by the way. Um, um, one is because when we see each other, normally we're in a mirror. So when we see each other, normally it doesn't look like you because it's been reversed. The other one is the way we sound is because I call it like a 3D effect. Because when we speak, we, we hear ourselves in our head. Yeah. So it's, like a, it's like a boost, like a bass, you know, um, a subwoofer type of thing. So you voice for me always sounds deeper and that sounds normal. I don't have an accent, do I? Yeah, you sound, I sound awesome in my own head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then when you play yourself, they go, oh, well, I don't, do I sound, do I sound like that? <laughs> you know, do I sound like that? <laughs> um, and, and what I encourage people to do is literally, when you, get, you, you just got to, I would just recommend just getting your camera out and start to record, just have a conversation with yourself the trick is actually to look at the camera, not look at the screen. Um, and just, just do it from the privacy of your own home or wherever it might be and just sort of go, hi, right, today I'm going to talk about uh, video on LinkedIn and just practice and then just play it back. The trick here is to play it yeah, back and so you see and hear yourself. And you just got to keep doing that until eventually um, you get used to yourself. No, you might never stop like the way you look and sound, but to relative you, it doesn't matter because people, in my experience, and as I said, I have done thousands of videos. Um, I don't know if I've ever had someone go, Simon, what are you doing? Why is that person on camera? They look and sound horrible. You know, it just doesn't mm -hmm. happen. Um, wow. that's, and so, I mean, there's loads of people you think maybe shouldn't be, have a really good face for radio. But it doesn't matter because as long as you've got uh, your messages right, you know, and, and your videos generally look what I call professional in terms of they can hear you, they can see you, the lighting's okay. But as long as the content is, is resonates with your audience, then people are not going to say, oh, I don't like the look of that person or the way they sound. 
Yeah. That's, that's cool. I found, I feel like maybe I'm too much of like a, an achiever person, but I don't want to just play my own videos back to better myself. I'm just too like, now nah, we'll just send it out there. I'm too impatient. But if I'm forced to edit, to edit it, then it forces me to listen. And it's brutal how I'm like, Isaac, you talk so slow. Speed it up, man. Uh, and I'm like, <laughs> or you, sl- you smack your lips. So you breathe heavy and just, ah. But I feel like forcing yourself to edit it is a way to, if you're impatient like me, it's a good way well, to. It is because then you learn, you learn. So, for, so that is one thing I always say. I always say, so, and you think, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and I tend to swallow my words as well. Sometimes I pronounce a word and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is why captions come really handy but um <laughs> but then you learn but you know editing is great if you've got time to edit yeah okay yeah. and and i think people um everyone says to me oh how do you edit what do you edit on and i'm like okay my biggest advice biggest tip is to edit if you're going to edit outsource it okay outsource yeah, that, it. any yes. guiding val- any guiding values on you know when does it make sense for someone to offload editing well, I think, I mean, depends what you, as, as a business, if you're a business owner or run your own business, um, you don't have time to, to, to editing videos takes hours. Mm-hmm. It takes at least four times as long to shoot, shoot a video than it is, uh, to edit a video than it is to shoot a video. And I just think as a business owner, it's one of those tasks. It's, it's like, a, you know, you shouldn't be doing the $10 tasks or the $100 tasks per hour. You should be doing work in the thousand and the 10,000. It's one of those things you, sh- you need to outsource. And you can do it now relatively, well, cheaply if you, if you do it overseas. If you go to the Philippines or somewhere like that, you can get an editor for less than $10 an hour, $5 an hour. Yes, there is, um, a, I guess it's a bit of trial and error. You've got to find that right person you can do it for. But if your videos are fairly like what I do, fairly, you know, it's a lot of talking to camera, top and tailing with maybe some simple graphics. And to be honest with you, it's better to have someone who knows what they're doing overseas to do it. Uh, you can turn it around in a few days. And so I edit my videos, they cost me $50 because I outsource it to the Philippines. Yeah. yeah. So, so even I outsource. Um, yes, you can use things like Upwork. Um, there's loads of local freelancers who do it, but they tend to be a lot more expensive, um, obviously, because they're local. So if you outsource to overseas, they tend to be much cheaper. Um, there's a, actually there's a, bit, there's a website called vidchops.com. They're a US-based company, but they're virtually outsourced to the Philippines. And they're charging something like uh, for $500 or $600 a month, you can have unlimited edits. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I, I have challenged in what they actually mean by unlimited. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> like the um, Simon guy. I have, yeah, I haven't used, I have actually, I tested them out. They're okay, you know, um, but they go, I just, at the moment, for me, it's a lot of time, so I, I'm not that one. Of, you know, I so I, I do edit. I must admit, but um, other when I can, I outsource as much as possible. And when it comes to my professional videos for my clients, I always bring an editor in, a pro editor in, editor in a local to do that. Do you do you have any thoughts? Is it better to pay per hour or per finished minute on the video? You pay by project. Pay per project. Yeah, just say, so the guy I use in the Philippines, he charges $50 for up to five minutes. Video. Okay. And, and that's great because it's, it's very rarely I do a video over five minutes for social media. Um, yeah, but no, get per, a lot of people do per, don't do it per hour because um, that could get really expensive because it would take more than an hour. I just do, I've got a video to edit, um, how much to edit, and I want it to be three minutes or something. And they'll give, they should give you a price for that. With revisions, but you need to include revisions because you always go back, back and forth. Yeah. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> I'm a bit yeah. of a perfectionist, so I, um, I always go back and say, no, can you change this? Can you change that? But that's the process. And, I, and my clients do that with me, and I expect that as well. Is it, is, it, um, is it kosher for, like me as a business owner, to ask the editor if they can send me not only the finished video, but the actual... Like, um, like if we're using Premiere Pro, say, can I have all the motion graphics mm-hmm. in the actual file? That's... Yeah, I, yeah, I do. Okay. I mean, I because I, I want to. Um, 
I, I do that with my editor because he cuts on Final, Final Cut Pro, which is great. Um, he uses quite a lot of plugins, and then anything you have to do is you have to buy those plugins, which are you know, $50 or $100, so that when you rebuild the project, that it, everything is there. But you can do that, yeah. I mean, it's, it's an unusual request because most people wouldn't ask, but I would. Yeah, and most of them yeah. will. But I mean, because yeah. you just want to, I'd have it for an archive reason more than anything. Yeah. I tend to go back and re-edit them unless I have, it's very rarely. Um, yeah. But no, ask, definitely ask. And they should, uh, I've asked twice other editors I've used and um, yeah, they generally, they will include that. The only thing they won't include is the, they won't give you the music track or the, or the plugins. Right, so obviously when you use music, of course you're using royalty free music, you're not using commercial music, and there's loads of sites um, that you can use. So if you're using an outsource editor, either supply them the music or subscribe to whatever they're subscribed to, so you can use the same music yeah. track. And if they say I'm using particular plugins, um, just say, give me the link and I'll buy the plugins. Yeah, they're not cool. going to be that expensive. Yeah, I've enjoyed the, uh audio stock from Envato Elements. I don't know if you've ever checked that out before. Yep. Yeah, I, know, I use, um, yeah, I'm familiar. I've, I've bought plugins from Video Hive, I think it's called, .net, and, and that all part um, of Audio Jungle, they're all yeah. part of that group. And they're good, I mean, because you can buy uh, more music and stuff for like $6 a track or something like that. You know, well, the Envato in, Elements now, it's like a subscription. So you um, do yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like 30 bucks a month and you can just download like a hundred. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, that's, you're yeah, that kind of person. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. Then. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I have a couple of camera questions if you don't mind, uh, Simon. I know they're probably over asked because the skill and the lighting makes a bigger difference than the camera <laughs> and a lot of, for a lot of people, cause they don't know how to use the camera. But the first one is I am curious what camera you're using right now. Cause I noticed your first note about the cam link. I've never heard of that before. And I'm your, your, your video looks really good right now <laughs> for a webinar, probably the best I've seen. So I'm curious what, what are you doing to achieve that? <laughs> what, what are your tips on good webinar video like this? So I'm using a pro cam. It's a Sony, it's a Sony a 64. It's a, it's a DSLR camera. Uh, I've got a really good lens. It's a Sigma 16 mil 1.4. So it means it, it'll give me the lovely blurred background. And in fact, you know, I'm not using, I do have a light here and a light here because it's getting dark here now in the UK. Um, probably a little bit overlit for me at the moment but because the light keeps changing. And I'm just doing an HDMI out into what's called a CamLink 4K adapter, which converts the HDMI into a USB signal, which then Zoom, Skype um, can then read uh, the camera like that and I just have a little microphone right here it's, it's a I use a Sennheiser little shotgun mic which plugs into the camera uh, Dave if you scroll to the very top of the chat uh, Simon Ray I, I knew it'd be asked more than once because his camera is awesome it's all it's all up there all of the specs weird and it works pretty much with any you know <clears throat> my obviously I use this camera profession as well so you know the setup is um, I think the camera was a thousand pounds, lens is about 600, but you can get n newer cameras like a, a Panasonic G5 and there's loads of others which will work just as well as this one. Um, the key is generally it's the lens that, that makes the difference. Mm -hmm. It's having a, what we call a prime lens, um, a little bit wide and, and fairly what we call fast, as in a low um, f-stop number. So 1.4, 1 1.8, something like that will be, works really well. And I noticed too, when you held up your iPhone earlier, you had a moment case on it. Do you use, is it, did I see that right? The, yep. Do you use your iPhone with moment lenses quite a bit? I mean, what's your ratio of shooting on your DSLR versus your iPhone? And for someone who's just starting out, I mean, your smartphone can do great video, especially with an mm. attachable lens and investing a lot in a super great DSLR. I mean, what's your thought on that when you're starting? Like what, where should you start and to get the best results in terms of equipment? Start with this. Start yeah. with an iPhone. <clears throat> Don't invest in DSLR at the, unless you're doing a lot of video content. Purely because I just know so many people who buy a DSLR, spend thousands of dollars, and it ends up in a box because they can't set it up. So I have a permanent setup here, pretty much. I've got a tripod behind my iMac. The camera pretty much sits on this, on this tripod all the time. So it's a, I mean, a light for here. So mine's a permanent setup. I can just switch on, switch the mic on, switch the light on, off I go. Yeah, 
So that, I had the luxury because I do have another camera as well and have more equipment. Um, but my advice is start with, especially if you've got a, one of the newer iPhones, anything, you know, like this is an XR, anything from an iPhone 7 Plus, I guess, is, is good. Um, and because the quality out, out of these is, is, is amazing, really is incredible. So I use mine particularly when I'm, on, when I'm out and about on the road doing behind the scenes. And when mm. I'm sort of doing my, I do, haven't done someone recently because it's winter here, but you know, I do, I do a walk and talk um, series. Yeah. And when I'm filming my walk and talk, I actually film, I film using the rear camera because it's better quality than the front camera. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's a bit of a trick to filming this way because you can't see myself. But, um, if you shoot 4K and I, sometimes I put a moment lens on it, it's wider. Only because um, people shooting with the front screen, if you're shooting video, it's, it's really hard not to look at yourself. It's really yeah. hard to not yeah. look at yourself because the lens on these things is just a little black dot and you just don't see it. So it's so tempting to talk to yourself. And of course, when you play it back, it's, it's a bit like you're looking slightly off. It'd be like me talking to you now like this. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, Simon, who are you looking at? Who are you talking to? You know? <laughs> So, it's, so I see that so many times when people start with the iPhone is that they, they just look at, look at themselves. I mean, I'm like, I'm over here, I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a, it's a rookie error to do. So if you, I would do, if you, had a, if you want to film that way, um, just put a post-it note or something to say, you know, so I know some people do a post-it note <laughs> and they'll put it over the screen you know, and I'll put a big arrow <laughs> saying, look here, <laughs> look here. So, Do you, are, um, you using, are you using the phone mic when you're doing those? No, I don't. I use, and I don't have it to hand. Um, I use a Rode um, mic. Uh, it plug, just plug, plugs in here. Just, it's a lightning port, and it's yeah. got a, what we call a, we call it a dead cat over here. It's got a thing on the end of it and it just okay. improves the quality a lot and, and especially outside it cuts down the wind noise nice yeah i've seen those before that's very cool yeah and then i also use uh you know i tend to, to use one of these like a this is a joby griller pod uh with an adapter yeah looks like a zebra cake yeah so when i'm in, when i'm in, when i'm in selfie mode okay so I'm <laughs> about, you know cool literally Walking through the park with a camera like this, you do get, well, <laughs> people look at you, but it's fine. You sort of get, it's amazing how people don't actually, don't actually really notice these days. I think people get used to people talking to the cell on the phones. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my setup. So I have two set. I do that for one. So I always carry this, my mic, um, which is in my, in my bag. Yeah. And so if I need to do something quickly, I have a basically a little, little studio in my backpack and that I can film and get a uh, really good quality. Cool. Very okay. cool. Dave, you have one more? I see you thinking about um, something. On a different topic, I'm just curious, and maybe this is just one of those outsource it kind of things, but I'm gonna be starting, I've talked with Isaac about this a lot on the topic of web accessibility, accessibility on websites for people with disabilities. So I'm gonna be doing a video series on that on YouTube in the near future. Um, I don't, it's not gonna be effective if it's just my talking head on the screen. I wanna kind of mix in some animations where you show, or at least some still frames of, to illustrate some things. Hmm. Those kinds of, uh, the kind of animations, the really good looking ones you do in like After Effects, I mean, that professional animators do. I know I'm not gonna achieve that level, but is there a, like a iMovie for animation that you're aware of, any type of, is there anything like that where it's like, it can make that process easier for those of us that are <laughs> not After Effects pros, or do you just recommend outsourcing that like you would, you know? Um, <clears throat> couple, it depends on uh, what are you using to edit with? Are you Mac or PC? Uh, or yeah. Final Cut Pro. So if you go to uh, what Isaac was talking about, Elements or Video Hive, you, you can buy um, templates yeah. that you that plug straight into Final Cut, which will okay. give you, I mean, they'll generally give you what we call infographics and bar yeah. charts. And <clears throat> depends on what you're looking, if you want to do that. Um, if you don't want to, and they will cost somewhere between 50 and $150 probably. Um, or you can actually use um, a Keynote, yeah. and you yeah. can do some, um, if you want to do some 
sort of graphics and it as in simple graphics in that and then you can export uh, keynote as a movie uh, otherwise if you want to do something a bit more <clears throat> motion graphic uh, you there are websites out there are apps and websites out there that that would that you can do I don't know of any because when I do motion graphics I outsource it to a motion graphics pro um, I opened up after effects a couple of times and then quickly closed it because it was like it's like photoshop on steroids <clears throat> and i just thought no i'm not getting not even start refer after effects i'm just getting someone else to do that because it's very complicated far too complicated i'll just stick yeah. it on my desk um have a look i'm sure <clears throat> it's a good point let me have a look uh, i should actually look it would be useful to know if there's any sort of resources out there the other one is to use something like fiverr um, and just put a just have a look because there's loads of people out there who do who do motion graphic for you if you know what you want specifically if you know pretty clear what what you want to achieve um just just outsource it yeah yeah all right if I, I put a link in the chat for the final cut pro compatible templates if you want to check that out just as one place and then <clears throat> tracy just added pilgrim animation mm. We, we had the chance to work with them through an event and they were absolutely fantastic clarifying the message and storytelling great so, yeah motion graphics to do a really high level it costs <laughs> it costs yeah. a few thousand per minute to do um so it depends on your on your budget but as i said yeah so the, but i'm sure there must be now sites you can buy templates or you can outsource there'll be there must be sites you can do it yourself type of thing I'm sure, I know they are. I know they're, they're out there. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. What, what Dave, what you might find works well too is if if you're kind of not ready to offload it totally, you might say, "All right, I want to use these five assets repeatedly, like the intro, the outro, the bullet points, or and like your name or whatever, like the same kind of things you might use repeatedly, and you might just have somebody create." the animation or the motion graphic whatever you're, you're going to use and then to make to spice it up and then you can do the rest you know yeah that makes sense yeah it's probably what simon was going to say yeah <clears throat> absolutely no it helps you're right it helps a lot to put <clears throat> i think with any video content any videos you're making and for me i mean the real key is consistency um is trying to produce regular video content and i think a lot of business people owners entrepreneurs really sh struggle with that particularly if you're yeah. trying to run your own business or work with clients um it's really hard to do and 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 that's um you know, that really is the key to, to success with video is consistency and that one is also trying to make your videos a little bit more interesting rather than just talking head and if you can find some elements or templates you can add some something over the top just to break up the the talking head imagery um, really helps and you can do that either with a bit of keynote graphics or stills or something like that or going to i'm sure there's loads of apps you can probably look at them and then create something yourself download that and add that into your edit yeah i'm going to ask you a question simon and you can answer me now my feelings will get hurt so i would i'd love your feedback so i've got i just recently had this hairy idea back in the end of december let's do the daily video the two minute tip right and so had that idea back in december wrote out like 250 topics and then just started cranking them out and so if you've seen them a couple of times i'd love to hear your thoughts on like how can those be better just so you know i'm thinking the intro should be like 100 times shorter short short in, yeah short intro straight to the point and then yeah, yeah i'm gonna do you're doing screen share sort of stuff really but yours are more how to tutorial type of stuff yeah. yeah, but how could they be better? Let me, I'll have a look. Let me look into them more detail. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'll be back, I'll be back. I'll give you, I'll okay. give you, I'll critique your work. I'll Hang on, let me pause, let me pause. I'll give you a mark record. out of 10. I'll give you an pa A, B, pause and C. Pause in Yeah. Cool. Well, hello everybody. Can you hear me first in the chat? Because I have some problem with my microphone. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. So, I'm on first on the call information. It's highly, highly appreciated. I mean, I see you in all of this. And first, I want to ask you something. Because based on my experience with my clients, some of them 
doesn't even want to turn up the camera in front of me. I mean, when we have like one on one conversation. And how do you overcome the challenge to put that some of your clients in front of the camera for their video content for their site, I mean, social media and so on? So, how did you shift them? I mean, did you have maybe challenges in that way? And how did you overcome the challenges? Did you catch that, Simon? It was, it was a tiny bit choppy, Alex. Did yeah. you? I didn't so, quite get that. Sorry. Are, so, Alex, are, are you saying, uh, how do you convince your client to get on camera when they don't want to? Is that the first thing you said? Yes. And, and yes. then the second, was, was there part two? That was the part two because the part one was where I have the problem with my clients to like have conversation one on one and they didn't want to turn up camera because like shy in front of camera and so on and so forth. So that was my question. And thank you for saying this once again. What do you think, Simon? Yeah, it's hard to I get that too. A lot of clients don't want to be on camera. Um I think you, and I understand why, uh, it's very common that people don't want to go on camera for loads of reasons, uh, the way they look and sound. Um, I'm not sure what, either there'll be performance, uh, fear of being judged, what people think of them. Uh, but I think as a business owner, and if you're serious about doing uh, marketing, you need to have video. And <laughs> short answer is they need to get over themselves and do it. And, it, yeah. it's, and there's no short, uh, I'm sure that, I'm sorry, there's no magic Hill I can give anybody to become a superstar presenter on video. It's about it's about practice, and the way to do that is is um, if they're on camera, is try not to make them have to perform long what we call pieces to camera on camera, but try and break it into into paragraphs or a couple of sentences, and then try and find some what we call overlay, whether it's a graphic or some what we call B-roll, other footage. So they don't have to be on camera all the time. They can then basically do what we call a voiceover. So anybody who's really like, I don't want to go on camera, I would break it up. Just do a little bit at the front. We will then um, record the script as a voiceover. And then, you know, maybe at the end and, and start that way. Thank you. Yeah. So Simon, we work with a company in Dallas that does corporate video. And one thing that gentleman has said that owns a company is, is he tells people all the time, everybody feels nervous going on yeah. camera. Like you're not alone. Like what it's like what you're feeling person who doesn't want to go on camera is what almost everyone but a narcissist feels. <laughs> yeah. No, it's very, um, I mean, very rarely do I come across someone who, who is like, yeah, put me on camera. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And those are the people you don't want on the camera. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I have, yeah, normally I, I have to control, convince, support, people being on camera and and there's no as I said, it's it's not easy and it's it's very natural it's natural for people if you weren't nervous i'd probably be a bit more worried actually if you're too yeah. confident because then if you're too mm -hmm. confident you can come across as being too cocky yeah yeah so the idea is is um not not to be you know a bit of nerves is good actually because it sort of potentially will heighten your performance cool well, here we're rolling up on an hour, which is so generous of everyone's time. Did you want to you want to roast me on the video? Did you get a chance to gloss it over? Any thoughts? See, you, Tracy. Not yet. I'm going to I'm going to let me have a look at them. I need to look at some of your videos and I'm going to get I'll be in touch. Yeah. Okay, so not right now but later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give me, yeah, yeah. Let me have a let me have a look at them. I've seen a couple of them. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. I need to watch some more. <laughs> Yeah, I need to investigate further. All right, all right. I'm always open for feedback, unless you're a jerk about how you tell me, then I'm going to get offended and no, not no. do anything about it. Okay. I'll, I'll, be very, I'll be very gentle. I'll be very, I'll be very constructive. All right, yeah. cool. I appreciate it. All right, well, I'm going to let everyone go. Simon, thanks for your time. I'll record this and send you the, the link if you want it. Thank you. That'd be great. All right. All, all right. right. We'll see you guys later.